Hi everybody, hope you're well. Uh, today we'll read from a book titled The Architecture of Paul Rudolph by Timothy Rohan, published by Yale. It's hard to be depressed in here, Rudolph said of the bed chamber in his Bigman Place apartment renovated in 1975. The offhand remark in House and Garden suggested that the interior had become a refuge from Rudolf's professional difficulties. Perhaps because of its obviously erotic content, the advertising mural had long since been removed. Abandoning the mural form altogether, Rudolf instead channeled his decorative impulses into increasingly complicated effects of light, reflection and surface. In the renovation of the bedroom, Rudolf mirrored both end walls and the ceiling and hung a light curtain of miniature bulbs reminiscent of Christmas tree lights. The reflected grid of lights suggested that space extended to infinity beyond the 9 by 14 foot room. Rudolf said that every room had such implied spaces, a concept he associated with Mies architecture, paralleling the 19th of the human brain, which makes up the subconscious and the imagination. Rudolf cobbled together his apartment renovation in his typical makeshift way. Rodner remembers Rudolf proudly showing him the renovated bedroom only to have one of the strings of light fall and short out all the electricity in the apartment. Shortly afterward, Rudolf embarked on a major renovation of the Bigman Place house itself, building a four-story penthouse of plexiglass, steel and other materials. Its illusionary enigmatic quality raised the level of danger and stimulation found in his earlier interiors to new levels of intensity. Interior elements big and small, the refinement of a fireplace around, the replacement of a floor with stainless steel panels, were part of an ongoing architectural experiment nearly impossible for the historian to track. Rudolf would quickly sketch a detail as inspiration sized him. It would be executed by workmen just as quickly, giving the penthouse a remarkable improvisational and homemade character, quite different from the slickness often associated with modernism. The two-decade-long continuous renovation was Rudolf's late career masterpiece. Although the economic recession impacted Rudolf's practice, it also made it possible for him to undertake this project, making it feasible for Rudolf to buy 23 Bigman Place in 1976 for a reasonable $300,000. Rudolf was never skilled at managing money, but he had saved enough for the down payment because he was frugal in the way he lived and practiced. Rudolf renovated the townhouse additional apartments with his own details and finishes and then rented them out. The rentals paid for the building's mortgage and supplemented Rudolf's income in lean times. Work began in 1977, when Rudolf demolished his fourth-floor apartment. It was too idiosyncratic for a rental unit and began building the rooftop addition. Like the Hirsch residence, the Bigman Place penthouse was a steel frame structure painted brown. Here, Rudolf clad the frame with metal and precast concrete panels. In the summertime, lush plantings softened its many cantilever terraces and balconies, giving it the appearance of a hanging garden. The apartments Rudolf had envisioned for the New York Graphic Arts Center and the open terraces of the skyscrapers he began to build in Asia in the early 1980s presented a similar aspect. 
Rudolf split the penthouse between public rooms, which were centered on a double-height living room overlooking the East River, and private chambers, which consisted chiefly of the guest apartment or library, which had its own double-height living space. A small plexiglass elevator at the center of the apartment rose through the four levels, treating visitors to a unique and terrifying experience of surfaces and spaces appearing and receding simultaneously above their heads, below their feet and all around them. Plexiglass hallway floors and staircase threads formed a transparent series of bridges in the apartment center, filtering sunlight into it and affording fascinating and complex views through multiple levels. The transparent materials confused visitors and not everyone reacted positively to these spaces. To Rudolf's amusement, guests at his occasional parties sometimes had vertiginous reactions. One woman fainted and was removed on a stretcher. Wine glasses set down on what appeared to be solid surfaces often plunged and shattered on distant floors below. The penthouse was Rudolf's summary statement about his work, reiterating his belief that it was worth taking risks to make architecture and urbanism that provoked strong reactions. It recalled aspects of some of his most compelling projects. Looking at multiple levels through the transparent floors at the house center approximated the experience of seeing subways, people movers, and highways conjoined through transparent surfaces beneath the hub in the city corridor scheme. He also evokes some of his most memorable interiors. The all-white, double-height living room resembled the exhibition room and drafting room at the Yale Arts and Architecture Building and the living rooms of Rudolf's New Heaven House and his Hirsch House. It was illuminated by dazzling rays of sunlight that reflected off the East River and were then refracted across the marble floors and in the mirrored surfaces of the columns and beams. Certain objects evoked Rudolf's past. Occupying a corner of the living room was one of the plaster panels of Louis Sullivan decorative ornament he had displayed in the Arts and Architecture building. Rudolf still played the piano daily and, in a gesture that defied gravity, hired a crane to hoist his grand piano from his previous apartment onto the living room balcony. Across from it, Rudolf drew in mid-air at a cantilevered drafting table. The Big Man Place penthouse had many surprises. A combination shower, bathtub and jacuzzi in Rudolf's top floor master bathroom had a clear plexiglass bottom that formed the ceiling of the two spaces below, the kitchen and the bedroom of the guest apartment. The plexiglass bottom funneled light into the center of the apartment like a skylight, but it also presented opportunities for taking in mesmerizing visual juxtapositions, as the critic Michael Sorkin politely put it in his 1988 article about the penthouse of one or more bodies in the jacuzzi, which may have delighted or disconcerned anyone beneath it, especially amid the prosaic pots and pans of the kitchen. Rodner remonstrated with Rudolf, telling him the transparent bottom was both impractical and unconventional, but Rudolf thought bathrooms afforded opportunities for pleasure and sensuality. The penthouse had also many of Rudolf's almost secret implied spaces. Shielded from the street by shutters, the guest apartment or library was accessible by many different entrances, staircases, hidden doors and fire escapes, allowing occupants to come and go freely. A brushed steel floor, mirrored ceilings and columns clad in mirrored laminate reflected in a hauntedly blurred fashion the dark, shadowy and mysterious beautiful double-height living room at the guest apartment's center and anyone in it. 
In contrast to the white hues used elsewhere in the penthouse, Rudolf upholstered the low sofas in black leather. Sorkin declared the room masculino. The guest apartment had surreal touches of its own. The clear bottom of a plexiglass sink formed part of an overhead soffit. Viewers below could see water pooling when the faucet ran. A railless steel staircase, a striking piece of folded sculpture, led from the sitting room to the bedroom, small study and bath on the upper level. Such dreamlike chambers were a retreat for Rudolf, an insular, sybaritic, aesthetically rich sanctuary from the tribulations of the real world. With Rudolf's late residential works, especially the Bigman Place penthouse, the architect came closer than ever before to achieving the psychologically and physically stimulating environments laced with traits from playfulness to danger and eroticism that he had always sought to build. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.